What's going on ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to today's installment of Renegades Reviews. I am the Renegade J.J. Williams, here to bring you my thoughts on the final chapter of the Star Wars saga, at least to date. This is what everybody has been waiting for, Episode 7, The Force Awakens. After reviewing movies 1 through 6 chronologically, and even throwing in the two Ewok movies, and the Star Wars Holiday Special. We are finally at The Force Awakens, the newest installment into the Star Wars franchise. We're three decades after the defeat of the Galactic Empire. A new threat arises. The First Order attempts to rule the galaxy, and only a ragtag group of heroes can stop them along with the help of the Resistance. This movie brings back Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, and Mark Hamill as Han Solo, Princess Leia, and Luke Skywalker. It also brings back Peter Mayhew, Anthony Daniels, and Kenny Baker as Chewbacca, C-3PO, and R2-D2, and it introduces us to a new group of heroes and villains with Daisy Ridley as Rey, the female lead in the movie, John Boyega as FN2187, aka Finn. We've also got Adam Driver as Kylo Ren, and Oscar Isaac as Poe Dameron. Now, this is going to be the non-spoiler version. I've also put up a version that goes into a lot more detail and is designed for people that have already seen it. So, if you have not seen The Force Awakens yet, this is the review that you should be listening to because I'm not going to spoil anything or give it away. If you have already seen it, and want to know my thoughts on the big stuff, you can stop this recording now and go to the other recording where I will get a lot more in depth and cover all the big stuff. Now that being said, I have to say that The Force Awakens was a tremendous movie. It was everything you would want from a film in the Star Wars franchise. We had about a good 30, maybe 40 minutes of getting introduced to the new characters, Finn and Rey and Poe and Kylo, before we started to get the older characters coming back and integrating themselves into the storyline. Han and Leia and Chewie and C-3PO and R2-D2 the only one who we didn't get a whole lot of is Luke. And you can sort of sense that Luke is a major part of the story, but not necessarily the movie by the trailer. Because if you think about the trailer, you don't see Luke anywhere. And the general synopsis of this is trying to find Luke Skywalker. That's the main purpose of this movie. The First Order, the Resistance, and finding Luke Skywalker. Where has Luke gone? He's been MIA for quite a few years, but why? And I think that J.J. Abrams did a tremendous job telling this story. Like I said, we spent a good 30 to 40 minutes meeting our new characters and getting invested into their lives and who they are and why they're doing what they're doing before we start to get too much of the old. And there's a whole lot of parallels between The Force Awakens and A New Hope. I'm not going to go too in-depth with those because some of those are spoilers but let's just say that if you, when you watch this movie, 
you will see a lot of the parallels between this and the original installment in the Star Wars franchise, Episode 4, A New Hope. I think that all the characters did a tremendous job. I very, very highly want to praise Daisy Ridley and John Boyega for their portrayals of Rey and Finn, of, um, respectively, because without their portrayals of those characters, you don't get invested in this story. They did a tremendous job, and Adam Driver as well as Kylo Ren, I think, played a tremendous villain. The only issue I have with Kylo Ren is I think that they're trying to make him follow Vader's footsteps a little too much as opposed to making him his own man. Again, that's not anything big given away because in the trailers you even see him say, I will finish what you started talking to Vader's mask. So I think that's the only true issue with Kylo Ren is that they're trying too hard to make him follow Invader's footsteps. Um, other than that, this is a really, really great movie. I am welcoming this installment to the Star Wars franchise with open arms. A lot better than The Phantom Menace. A lot better than Attack of the Clones. I would have to put this installment in my top three Star Wars movies. That's right. I don't know if I would put it at number two just yet because I've only seen it once. It only just came out. I may just be so excited for a new Star Wars movie that I want to rank it high right now. I'd have to give it a little bit of time and see if the movie stands the test of time like the original trilogy does. But as it stands right now, The Force Awakens would be my number three Star Wars movie of all time, underneath Empire and Revenge of the Sith. What do you guys think of The Force Awakens? Those of you that have seen it, um, those of you that have not seen it, I hope that my review makes you want to go out and see it and invest money to go see this, because this is a tremendous piece of film work. As I stated, J.J. Abrams, did phenomenal with this. What other movies would you like for me to discuss come the first of the year when I get back to regular fare and step away from all the Christmas ones because the holidays will be over and we'll be getting back towards more traditional Renegades Reviews shows like this. Let me know what you want me to talk about. Leave your suggestions in the comment box below. Tweet them to me, as always, at R-O-W-J-J Williams. And until next time, when I bring you another regular review, right here on Renegades Reviews on the Casa D18 Studios channel, I am the Renegade J.J. Williams. I look forward to talking to each and every one of you once again next time. And until then, may the Force be with you.